right. If you won't give it to me, I'll come in and get it for myself. Hey, you ain't doing no get work. Get my head out of me oh. way. Get out of me, please. Here, here, here. 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 Here.
Nasty, I think. Mm -hmm. The ad's in the property section. Have you a housing problem? Are you a Cathy? No need to be now, thanks to Mrs. Pilgrim, practical philanthropist of the 60s. Are you interested in a five-room flat, all mod cons, no restrictions, etc., immediately available to needy applicants at only 35 bob a week? <laughs> if so, let Pilgrim's New Homes Association help you. Send 10 bob and stamped address envelope to box P438 in Uneaton Evening Argus. Not that one again. Oh, you've met it before? Not that particular one. They didn't bother with all that window dressing then. It was in the 50s. And there was an acute housing shortage. It still is. Yeah. There are many people who risk 10 bob on the hope of a dream flat. Well, it doesn't exist. It couldn't exist. Is that rent? Yes, it's nasty. So simple, though. A small town, a few hundred ten bobs, a quick killing in a way. I'll follow it up, then. Yes, do that. No, I'll do it myself. You can't. Can't? Why not? Well, you've got Todd Seaton and the long, hard grind. Oh, that'll keep. Nothing will make any difference to the shareholders now. And Todd Seaton shacked up in Buenos Aires. Foxy? Now, about this drunk. A Leary, an Irish labourer. Living with wife and children in Swallow? Of course. Oh, uh, carry on with this, will you, Foxy? Not Seaton? Yeah. Me, sir? Yeah. Oh, it's sad. It's simple arithmetic. You've got your own levels now. I won't be long. If anyone calls, I'm building some ports. Drive me to Nuneaton, Hicks. We could ring the Argus. I want you to see the O'Leary woman. I need evidence. You can drop me off at the Argus on the way. Who is that on the phone? This is the original galley proof of the advertisement inserted by Major Blunt. In person? No, by post with payment in advance. I thought newspapers didn't accept small ads that were asking for payments to box numbers. Oh, well, we don't usually, but I was away at the time. Uh, it was a silly little girl. I see. Well, what address did Major Blunt get? The Dolphin Hotel. And that's where you send the replies? Well, actually, no. The uh, Major Blunt sent a clerk round to collect the replies. It'd been rather a lot. How many? The CB ran the ad for five days, I would say about four or five hundred letters. Ah, all collected by Clark? With a letter of authority, yes. Uh, yes, I'm sure, but you've never actually seen this Major Blunt, and you don't know that any such person is staying at the Dolphin. In fact, you don't even know if he exists. Well, oh, but he does. Well, I'm sorry. How do you know? Well, there was a query about the wording of the advertisement, and I had to phone Major Blunt to check. At the Dolphin Hotel? Yes. Would you ring the Dolphin now, please, and see if he's still there? Certainly. Thank you. Oh, could I have a piece of paper, two envelopes, and a stamp? A five penny one, please. Yes, I suppose so. Thank you. How long have you lived here, Mrs. O'Leary? Six months. That's all coming down. We've got gold. Oh, I am sorry. They all say that. Don't nobody does anything. And that's why you answered the advertisement. It was worth trying. And your husband went to the Argus office because he'd sent his ten shillings and got no reply? I told him to give it time. He owned Miss Lowe. Well, he had had a fur, of course. How long was it since you answered the advertisement? Only four days. Only? Well, I reckon they must have had hundreds of answers. Nearly everyone in this street, for a start. Best bank take time to answer them all. Mrs. O'Leary, I hate to say this, but do you really think there'd be enough flats for all that many applicants? Well, no. What you take me for? Even if there was only two or three, that was worth having a go. I reckon you'd have a go if you lived here. With a family of kids under notice to quit. Come you on in here out of that rain! But what if the flat doesn't exist and you never get an answer? We're ten bob to the bad, that's all. Some clever old con man's got a lot of ten bobs to the good. Clever? They're clever. Wish my old Nick had thought of it. At least we'd have some cash when they chuck us out of here. Maybe clever, but it's also criminal. I wouldn't know about that. Well, I would. Now, Mrs. O'Leary, when we find the person who put in that advertisement... Mrs. Pilgrim. Possibly. When we find them, we should like your help. Mine? And your husband's. Nick. Help the coppers to deal with the people who swindled you out of ten shillings. What do you care about a few ten bobs? That's a conviction you're after, isn't it? Not the rest of your lot. It's a rum old thing you coming in here asking for help. You could help us when they chuck us out of here. You say the Major wasn't actually in? No, but he hasn't checked out yet. I see. Would you put this in box 438, please? And just do as I say. Don't worry, it'll be all right. All okay? Right.
Hi. Hello again, sweetheart. My, you get a little lovelier every day. Good afternoon, Mr. Joyce. Oh, what's this? Don't you love me anymore? I don't think that's very funny. Box 438 for Major Blunt, isn't it? Uh, damn well it is. Excuse me. What do you want? I'm interested in the advertisement. What advertisement? 438, it's yours. Not mine. Major Blunt's? Who are you? What do you want? One of your flats. Aren't you making a mistake? Look, I'm willing to pay a very good key money in order to jump the queue in cash. <laughs> Look, there aren't any flats. What, no flats? Then your advertisement wasn't strictly accurate. It wasn't my advertisement. Just as well, since a lot of people have been induced to pay money for information about a property which doesn't exist. Who says it doesn't exist? You did. I, I didn't mean it. You confuse me, of course it exists. Where? I don't know, and if I did, I don't have to tell you. That's all today. Well, you'll have to tell those people, and all the others who've answered. Otherwise, there might be a question of obtaining money under false pretenses. Who are you, the law? Yes. You've got nothing on me. Not yet. Right then. Can I use your phone, please? Yeah. Thank you. It goes through your switchboard, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Get me police headquarters, will you? CID? Huh? For God's sake, man, wake up. The drop floor. Well, you've got them all right. Be about the last lot from this town. That's right, if you On your feet, Skeggy. We've got a train to catch. Train? What? Where to? Back to Birmingham. Uh, well, what's wrong with the car? I'm ditching it here. Yeah. What's got into you? A fuzz. What, waiting for you? Yes. And let you walk out? You've got nothing to hold me on, had he? I'm on your messenger as far as he's concerned, but he's on to you, mate. Hmm. Better nip back to the hotel and pack my bag. Oh, my God, are you out of your tiny mind? The law will be right there waiting for you. Two seconds, Seagull's bell. Jackie, why Burnley? Oh, pull yourself together, Skeggy. Kay's meeting us there. But why meet her at all? You bastard. If we've got to run out anyway, we, we could split two ways instead of three. We'll go to Skegness, Jackie. Well, you'll find yourself another bird easy enough, a boy like you. You rotten bastard. Yes. Huh. As I am. Sorry, I'm just a passing thought. You're so keen to go running back to your birdie schedule. You do just that, mate. And Kay and I will split two ways. No, no, Jackie, forget it. You'd better pick it up too if you want your shot. Burmy, now are you coming or not? Of course I'm coming. Office. I should have known you'd be in here. You were late. What for? Skaggy. What's that? Not what? Who? Do you know what the odds are against pulling the jackpot? No. Neither do I. Remind me to work it out sometime. Who is Skaggy? Uh, he's calling himself Major Blunt at the moment. He's an old con man, sub alcoholic. He's got a girlfriend in Skagnet. Any time he's in the money, he whistles her up, the flight to Monte Carlo, and blew it. Do you think he's whistling her up now? I shouldn't wonder. I put out a call for him. How is the O'Leary woman? Well, she's due to be evicted, but you won't get her as a witness. She doesn't like us. No, they don't, do they? Poor old ex. It's a rotten life for coppers, and you could have been anything. Even an air hostess. Me? Well, don't you think? I was in an accountant's office at 17. At 18, I joined the police. Yes, I know. I read your file. But why? I know, you thought it was going to be all thrills, all black leather and fast stuff. I knew what I was doing. 
Did you? Well, you've got a new thrill coming up right now. You're my witness. Am I? You've just sent ten bob for full details of a five-room luxury flat at 35 bob a week. Papa. Yes, if we don't get any complaints, we can't nail them. And when uh, you get no answer and they pull in Skeggy, that'll be your big moment. Oh, wait. But what about Mrs. Pilgrim, the practical philanthropist? What well, does it matter? We've scared them off. It was a pitiful little con anyway. Four or five hundred answers at ten bob a time. And you've wasted half a day on it. I wouldn't call it wasted. Who's that? Kay. Do you expect some other bird to climb into bed with you? Kay, where the hell have you been? Every dreary town in the Midlands. I've been stuck here two days waiting for you. Well, it took longer than I thought. But I'm here now, darling. Kay, listen, you don't know what's been happening. Jackie, stop chattering. Listen to me, Kay. We've got to get out of here. You were wrong. The fuzz, they're onto it. Are they? It's only a matter of time before they pick us up. We can't do it again. Jackie, relax. By tomorrow, that advertisement will be in every local paper in the Midlands. We're covering a population of four, four and a half. Mm -hmm. No, we've got to scrub it. We've got to pull out of here. Oh, my God, it's all gone wrong. Nothing's gone wrong. Nothing can go wrong. I tell you, the law's on to us. can't touch it. Can't. I had some thoughts while I was away. I rang Morris and Chet. Now, shut up. You can wait until the morning. I've had a lousy week. They've devalued the rupee, and they want me to sort it out. Very likely. Do you remember this? What? Pilgrim New Homes? What again? Where? The ad's in every local paper within 100 miles of here. More, for all I know. It can't still be a box number. No, look. Reply to PNHA office. There's one in every town. Not such a pitiful little con. What did that man say? Four or five hundred answers from Nuneaton alone. What's the population? Oh, about forty-three and a half thousand. Yeah, that's one percent, give or take. Now, if they're covering the whole of the Midland area, that's a population of four, four and a half million. One percent equals forty thousand. Forty thousand ten bobs is really getting somewhere. I'd like to meet this pilgrim woman. You don't even know if she exists. I do now. It's too big for Skeggy and too alarming for young Joyce. Who's that? The frightened messenger boy. Now, there must be a Mrs. Pilgrim. And she must be quite a woman. Hicks, we'll have to find her. We'll start by checking these addresses. Where's this one? Small Heath. You're going there yourself? Why not? I need the fresh air. Oh, you won't be popular walking out on Todd Seaton again. I won't be popular if they get away with 20,000 on. It's time to stir them up, Hicks. While I'm away, you carry on with Todd Seaton. Uh, when you finish that. Where from? From the beginning? Bye-bye, Di-Di. I'll, I'll ring again soon, my pet. I've got to go now. Important business meeting. Me too. Nuneaton was just a dry run, but it proved our point. Right? Hmm? Right. Prove the law isn't so stupid. Stupid enough. How much did we clear for Nuneaton? 240 quid odd. That's gross. We've got to knock off expenses. 480 answers out of a population of 43,000. It's over 1%. We can count on at least another 20,000 from the next stage and a further 20,000 from the final stage. <laughs> 40 grand in used notes. <laughs> for Pete's sake, Kay, we've had our lot. Jackie, when you're out of bed, you bore for England. Morris, you tell him. Um, what? Why you're here at all. Ah, it's a good question. Because I need a legal advisor, and you're it. Yes. Well, I reckon I know as much about the law as the next man. Well, straight from school into a solicitor's office. Did, did I ever tell you? Yes, more than once. Stuck it out for years. Did well, too. Till the war came along. 
got myself into a spot of trouble with the... Uh... Yes, well, I need to go into that now. No, you needn't. Just tell him the score. Score? Have we done anything illegal? Ah! Well, it's true. There's nothing illegal in charging ten shillings for a brochure giving details for property. Right, and that's all we've done so far, isn't it? Wait a minute, my dear, wait a minute. There's nothing illegal provided the brochure is actually sent to the applicants. It will be. What? I've rented an office in Burton-on-Trent. An what? office? I've hired equipment and a squad of temporary girls. We start operating stage three this afternoon. You're turning it into a business. It is a business. I don't like it, it's too big. I mean, when we started, I thought, well, clean up quick and away. I mean, this sounds like a lot of work. A week, ten days, it won't kill you. I don't know. It's all so complicated now. In the old days, you could make a quid or two without all this fuss. The odd ration book, a few bottles of the hard stuff, petrol coupons, clothes, cigs, anything. You two wouldn't remember, but you could buy or sell anything in the market. And those bloody fools of politicians had to spoil it all by clamping down... Oh, shut up, you old fool! Don't give us that Leave spiel again! If it helps him to dream, let him. I'm only asking for a week's work to clear 40,000. Isn't it worth it? 40 grand. And use notes. So get packed. Pack what? Left all my stuff at none eaten. Not to mention two bottles of scotch. And Di's picture. I'll take you shopping when we get there. Hicks, give that switchboard hell, will you? I asked for Proud's office. If that's Gamble, I'll speak. You're Gamble? Where the devil are you? And where's that Todd Seaton report? Oh, you're waiting for it, of course. Well, you know damn well I am. You can have it this week. Thank you very much, Mr. Gamble. Oh, about the Pilgrim people. They've rented an empty house in Small Heath and they're using it as an accommodation address. All right, I'll get divisional CID to put a man on it. Thank you. Oh, there'll be, there'll be a big delivery of mail and one of them will have to collect it. Yeah, I just want them followed. I want to find out where they're shacked up. All right, leave it to me. up in a minute, Beryl. I'll just take that letter. What are you waiting for, Morris? Another call from Dinah? Well, you never know. I should forget it for once. You've got work to do. Work? Ha! In the good old days of the market, nobody worked. We did a little... Trading between drinks? Oh, Morris, for heaven's sake. It was 20 years ago. Now, for goodness sake, get a move on. Are you ready to dictate the covering letter, Mr. Silver? Uh, yes. You'll have to roll off a different copy for each location. You mean the addresses will be different? Yes, and the newspapers. I'll give you the list later on. You ready? Dear sir or madam, thank you for answering our advertisement in blank, fill in the name of the newspaper. I now have pleasure in enclosing our brochure, price 10 shillings, giving full details of the PNHA scheme and of all new homes immediately available. Please. Study it carefully. Underline that. Please study it carefully. If you have any doubts, we shall be happy to receive your questions. 
If you're interested in the scheme as outlined and would like an order to view one of the flats, I look forward to hearing from you again soon. Soon. Yours faithfully, Morris Blunt Major, Secretary, PNHA Plan. Major Blunt will sign on the scale. Yes, as soon as he gets back. And you'd better start by running off 500 of those for the non-eaten lot we've already had. I want to get them into the post today. Right. It came by this morning's post. You know, I really must meet this pilgrim woman. <laughs> Even the name's clever. Pilgrim, Pilgrim Trust. There can't be many people who haven't seen or heard that name somewhere before. The subliminal plug, Pilgrim Trust, Trust Pilgrim. Yeah, and Major Blunt. The name and the rank. Now, what could be more confidence-inspiring? And the brochure? A well-phrased store? Well... Yes, waiting until they've picked up their ten bobs and are ready to skip. You'd better read it. No, let me tell you. First, more detailed particulars about the luxury flat of 35 bob a week. Yes. Second, a lot of guff about Mrs. Pilgrim devoting her wealth and energy to this great social service of providing homes that you can afford. Right. And finally, the stall. So many applications, so little time. Be patient, you'll be hearing from us within three or four weeks. Nothing like. What? To help cover out-of-pocket expenses, and as a token that the applicant is serious, we invite a voluntary contribution to the funds, funds of PNHA, PNHA of, of two, two pounds. pounds. This payment will entitle contributors to be listed on our register and to receive details of all future homes as they become available. Because, unfortunately, there are none available at the moment? No. Huh? All contributors will receive by return an order to view and application form for tenancy of a flat ready for immediate occupation as advertised. In the, In event, the event of there, of there being, being more applicants than flats, application forms will be drawn at random and the first one drawn will be offered the first flat, etc., etc. <laughs> what a woman. She's got a nerve, but she's overdone it this time. Has she? Someone has blundered. Who? Me. You? Impossible. How? Ah. Well, by scaring the young man, I've merely warned the pilgrim woman to keep one jump ahead. Mm, you're a jump ahead of me. Yeah, but uh, it's the last jump that counts. Hicks, send two pounds for an order to view. What? Get me the legal department, please. Steady. Not that name here. Perhaps I should say Morris Blunt, a major. Well, how can you trust an old soak like that? You trusted him for three years. Well, I trusted, old sure. And we spent half the time watching each other. Do you know he wanted to run out on you with an uneaten dig? Wanted me to ditch you and split it two ways. Morris was always a small operator. He thinks small. And when this is over, he'll be small again. You don't really think we're going to cut him in, do you? 40,000 is handy, but it's not a fortune. And it does spit much better two ways than three. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Kay. In the meantime, Morris knows the law. And he has work to do. Yes, yes, that's what I thought. If I can't get them any other way, I'll have to string them along and wait for it. Yeah, yeah, I'll send over what I've got. Right, thanks. Any news from the man watching the house? No. Oh, jump the gun, save a day, deliver it by hand, will you? Foxy, get the car, will you, Hicks? Well, you can't walk out on that again. Can't, Sergeant? Well, well I mean, if the car walks in... Yes, sir? Oh, I'm going out. If anybody wants me, I'll be within a radius of a hundred miles. A hundred? Give or take a mile. But wherever I am, my thoughts will be here with you and Todd Seaton, legal department. Ready, Hicks?
right. Cheers. Cheers. Well, I've checked with the house agents. It's the same as Nuneaton and Dudley. Mrs. P has paid a week's rent for the right to put up a notice. And presumably the same in every town in the area. Every town with a local paper. It's a lot of hard work. Mm. I don't see the point. The confidence. And that's what it's all about. You see, if you answer an ad for a flat in Derby, you get a Derby address on the reply. It gives you confidence. Well, where do you fancy next? Nottingham? On a buzz down the M1 to Leicester? We don't have to drive all around the Midlands, do we? No, of course not. When we finish this, we'll go round to the GPO sorting office. What for? Well, you don't imagine the pilgrim lot drive round the Midlands every day collecting their mail, do you? I want to find out where all those ten bobs and two quids end up. They don't like us either. Did you get the answer? Yes, a postal redirection form. All mail for PMHA is forwarded to an address in Burton-on-Trent. Burton-on-Trent? Uh-huh. Do you know it? Yeah. Let's go there, then. You're going to pull them in? On what charge? Oh, oh it's false pretenses. You haven't done your own work, Ix. No, no, Mrs. B is a smartish operator. After an unequal, she'll be expecting a visit from the law. now she'll be puzzled and therefore unpredictable but if I go there and make a tiny fool of myself let her believe she's one jump ahead till the last jump what would you say two hours to Burton on Trent Post office. Beryl, you rang up? Yes, Mrs. Pilgrim. Well, what did they say? They were ever so grateful for the warning. We had to take on extra stuff. Like Christmas, you satisfied? I suppose. All right, on your way, Santa Claus. Ah, uh, Mrs. Pilgrim, I've got about 50 here didn't send Santa dressed envelopes for reply. Then we don't answer. But they did send the cash. That's too bad for them. We made the conditions quite clear in the advertisement. Just amongst the girls. It's a bonus. I'm so free, Mrs. Pilgrim. Not now, after work. Kay. The girls have taken a key there on. Please? The same one as before. It's someone dropped into the yard. He's taking his time. Look, if we grab what's in the safe and slip out the back. Don't be a fool. I know how to handle it. Girls, why not take a break? Go down to the cafe. Oh, how can you handle him if he wants to see a flat? We haven't even Off got you go, back in him. ten minutes. Where are they going? Tea break, if it's any concern of yours. Mrs. Pilgrim? Yes. Can't you read? It says no callers. I'm a police officer. Inspector Gamble. Yes? Ah, the messenger boy. We've met before, Mr. Joyce. Yes, but I... Jackie, why don't you go and have a cup of tea with the girls? I'd rather he stay. Why? He might be able to help me with my inquiries. Uh, your inquiries? Inquiries concerning your advertisement. Is there something wrong with it? Well, in the first place, you've given a different address for your organization in each town. And in each case, it was an empty property. Is it against the law to use an accommodation address? Without the knowledge and consent of the owners. And also affixing notices to these properties without the knowledge and consent of the owners. Try again, Inspector. I'm paying rent on all these properties for the right to use them this way. Your what? Check with the agents. And now, if that's all, we are rather busy. Uh, just a couple more questions, Mrs. Pilgrim. May I? This uh, secretary of yours, this so-called Major Blunt, where is he, by the way? Out. Just one more thing. I'd like to see one of these flats you've been advertising. No. Why not? There isn't one. Is that it? I... Inspector, if you're going to charge us, you'd better do it and caution us. Otherwise, we don't have to answer your questions. 
On the other hand, if your advertisement isn't fraudulent, you'd be wise to prove it, if you can. Okay, you'll have it. Inspector, if you want to see one of the flats, why not apply for an order to view like anyone else? Why not give it to me now, if you've got nothing to hide? I don't see why you should jump the queue just because you're... In the bag? Who's your friend? It's an Inspector Gamble. He wants to ask you something. This is our honorary secretary. At your service. Nothing wrong, I hope. Are you aware that it's an offence for a civilian to pass himself off as a commissioned officer? Yes, indeed. And is this your signature? That's right. Morris Blunt, Major. No, 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 Inspector. Morris Blunt, Major. No comma. Clear the safe. But no comma. Major's not a rank, it's part of my name. Your name's Blunt, Major. That's right. Used to be Blunt, but I changed it. Why? Avoid confusion. What confusion? Younger brother, Blunt Minor. Did it properly, mind you. D. Poe. Want to see it? Well, uh... If that's all, Inspector, we are rather busy. And if you are interested in seeing one of the flats, why not apply for an order to view? I think so. Can't you see the egg? What now? I can think of no reason for neglecting Todd Seaton any longer. You're too late. Why? Well, last time I phoned in, Foxy said Proud's taken all the papers. One lease. Flat three, Fairmile House. Signed, sealed and delivered. Put it in the safe. Beryl, will you come up with your pad? How the hell did you take so damn long? You try pushing a lawyer into getting a lease through in 24 hours. Forget it. Ready? Order to view, flat three, Fairmile House. Flat three, Fairmile House. Do you want me to look at it? Of course. Take the car. And follow it up with an application to rent, presumably. Right. Campbell? Yes, sir? There's the Todd Seaton report. Would you like to look it over? Um, yes, sir. Thank you. Now then, about this pilgrim case that you're also supposed to be handling. It's all going according to plan, sir. Oh, yes. Whose plan? Mine. Why haven't you pulled them in yet? On what? A fraudulent advertisement. Oh, false pretenses. Inducing the public to pay money for a false prospectus of a non-existent property. But it does exist, sir. I've sent Hicks to see it. It's in Burton-on-Trent. They've been advertising all over the place. And what's the use of a flat in Burton to a man who works in Coventry or Nottingham? Not at all. But they've been very careful never to specify where the flat was. Now, why haven't you... Uh... They've covered themselves in one of their letters by saying, if there's anything you want to know, we'll be glad to answer any queries. Let's see the file. You checked all this with the legal people? Yes, sir. What do you mean everything's going according to plan? It is. I need two more days. What for? What's to stop them shoving off whenever they like with 40,000 quid? Well, the Burton CID have been very cooperative, sir. They've got a man watching this pilgrim woman. Well, there are three of them. They could split up. I'm not interested in the other two. Anyway, I don't think they'll run yet. At least, I don't think the woman will. You'd better be right. Seems a bit of all right, that kitchen, don't you? Oh, it's lovely. Seems very nice, don't you? Valeria, but you don't live in this town. Is there a law against moving, then? No, of course not. Now then, now then, what one at a time. What are you doing here? Well, you've come to spoil our chances. No, nothing like that. Good luck to you. 
Oh, excuse me. I have an order to view flat now. I know, it's open. You'll have to take your turn, though. Oh, I'm not the first, then. First? I've never seen nothing like it. We must have had 50 or 60 already this morning. Not the sort of tenants we are used to, I can tell you. Beats me how they think they can afford a flat like that. Oh, thank you, madam. If you'll come this way, I'll take you over myself. Before I see the flat, is there somewhere we could talk privately? There's one or two questions I'd like to ask. Certainly, madam. This way. Anything I can do to help. Yes, yes, you were quite right to do with bribery. If you'd told him who you were, he'd have boxed clever. Now, let's have the facts. Well, the flat is everything it advertised, only more so. It's got the lot, and apparently it's only just been let to Major Blunt. Or Blunt Major. Yes, the case may be. And the porter understands that the Major, or the Blunt, if you prefer it, was suddenly ordered abroad. And because he was lumbered with the lease, he's had to sublet? Right. What about the rent? Well, rent rates and so on bring it up to about 750 a year. Yeah, 750 a year, less 35 bob a week, over three years, that's a loss of, ooh, 2,000, give or take. Not bad when you're raking in 40,000 odd profit. Hmm, I worked that out for myself in the back of an envelope. Hicks, you're a credit to the department. What now? Well, we're nothing for two days. We'll give the post office time to forward the applications. Yeah, and then we arrive with a morning delivery. Right, I'll come back to the office then. You must be joking. Meet you at the Cavendish Club. I still haven't worked out those jackpot odds. Foxy! Sir? Another job for you. Sir? On expenses. Report to Burton on Trent. Your card. Thanks. Are you sure you won't need any help tomorrow? No, thanks, Beryl. I think I can manage on my own now. Well, goodbye, all. Bye. I have enjoyed us. Good. Well, there it is, my dears. After all expenses and allowing for a few checks made out of PNHA, which might be tricky to negotiate, I calculated in cash and postal orders there'll be 38,500 to split three ways. Which should keep you and Dinah going in Monte for a bit. Given luck, given reasonable luck, one a lot with that fuzz still out there. My dear boy, when will you learn? He can't touch us. You'd better keep this. Then what's he waiting for? Look, if we split it now and all walk away in different directions... He'd follow me. You could lose him. What do you say, Morris? I say have a drink. <clears throat> if we follow it right through to the end, you're sure we're still in the clear, as legal advisor. Have I been wrong so far? No. Go through it step by step. Up to now, we haven't promised anything we didn't carry out. We offered a brochure for ten bob. We sent them a brochure. We collected two quid subs entitling subscribers to an order to view. We produced a flat for them to see. But if we ran out without offering it one of them to You're rent... right again, of course. Hello? Hang on. Somebody booked a call to Skegness. Hello? Yes, it is. Dinah, my pet? Uh, no, my love, no snags. Everything like I told you in my letter. We finish tomorrow morning, and then dear old Monty. Morning, sir. Morning. Where's Foxy? He's gone. He'll be hearing you. Fine. Follow me in. A hundred and forty-five, a hundred and forty-six, a hundred and forty-seven, a hundred and forty-seven, even in Burton on trend. Okay, you're right. <laughs> you always are. You're great, and I love you. Where should we go? Oh, does it matter? Monty? <laughs> <laughs> well, the hell's Skeggy. Morning, Mr. Joyce. Mrs. Pilgrim. Where's the Major? We've gone on ahead. Where are you meeting him? We don't even know if he's... Inspector, if you have something to say, get it over with. We're rather busy. 
I've just come along to see Fair Play. You must have had thousands of applications for your flat. So what? Well, you're all packed up. The girls have gone. You're not going, are you? Of course we're not. We're just going through the last of the applications. Yeah. 20,000 applications and one flat. Who gets it? We don't know. Well, I want to know. This lady is one of the applicants. She wouldn't like to think that you'd let it to somebody for key money on the side. Inspector, we propose to do exactly what we undertook to do. Jackie, will you put those? In the event of there being more applications than flats, the application forms are picked at random. Would you like to choose the lucky one yourself? No, I told you. I've just come along to see Fair Play. Jackie? Mr. Thompson Nuneaton. Nuneaton? Well, if he can't get work here, at least he'll be able to afford 35 bob a week rent on the welfare. Is that all, Inspector? No, it isn't. The detective constable here will be taking you along to the station. What do you mean? I must warn you, you're not obliged to say anything, but anything you do say will be given in evidence. But what is this? Everything we've done has been within the law. You will be charged with conducting an illegal lottery. Kay, it's gone. The money, he's cleaned it up, there's not a note left. Skaggy knew. I knew it. I've been watching it for three years. Three years has been trying to slide out on me. I could keep tabs on him. Right, it's all But you had everything on Come on, Vicky. You were so damn cool, you stupid bitch! I can't wait oh, to meet this dad I was. you. Mess. At least you've got somewhere to live. Sorry, my pet. It's all too complicated now. Not like the good old days.